In this video I'm going to argue that wet blending could be a thing for rank and file historical miniatures and that you, yes you, could probably give it a go because if I can do it then literally any moron is capable of it. Hello everybody. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm sorry. Um, I'm apologising because it's yet another wet blending video. And if you run that te painting technique through uh, the YouTubes, you will find plenty of videos of people trying to explain what wet blending is and how you can do it and how you should or could go about it. Many, many, many. But I find a lot of them a bit confusing. They're probably trying to do something with the final product that I'm not trying to do. So they're trying to, in a lot of these wet blending videos, they're trying to create award-winning miniatures. I was trying to use it to get uh, better colours and blends in my colours more quickly. So I've been trying to use it as a time saver rather than to win anything. Uh, and. I'd had a crack at it a couple of times in the past and I'd messed it up and it hadn't worked and yeah, waste of time, absolute waste of time. But while I've been doing this little run of horses recently with like nice big surface areas, I've been having a crack again and I've tried a couple of new things and I think I might have got it on a sort of level in a way that works for me and does what I want it to do. And I'm quite excited because not only is it proving quicker, but also it's giving better results in certain circumstances. So the miniature in front of you, apart from the metallics and the flesh, was largely painted using all wet blending. Um, which, for the beginners out there, is a type of miniature painting technique, whereby you get two or three different contrasting colours like your brown, your dark brown, up to your light brown, and you get them onto your miniature, and rather than layering things up slowly, you blend those two contrasting colours together on the miniature while those two paints are still wet, so before they dry. The theory being that you can get a nice transition between a very dark area, yeah, in the corner there, into the lighter area you can get a nice smooth blend between the lighter sort of highlighted color in the middle there and the darker recesses you can get it quickly and effectively um, if you don't know what you're doing it's hard if you're a brand new beginner i suggest you don't even bother but if like me you're trying a few things you're getting curious it could be a thing and this week in particular I think I've made it a thing um, and I'm going to try and show you what I've done and explain how you could possibly use it to knock things out quickly to a decent standard rather than using layers or as an addition or extra tool to using layers. So I'll shut up, um, I'm going to move the camera and we'll start all the way at the sort of palette and paint stage. Right then, so I've got a palette. It is a wet palette. If you don't know what that is, Google it, um, you know, you, you'll, you'll see. Um, I'm using one in this case because I do need the paint to stay uh, wet throughout this process, ideally. You could do this using a dry palette and you'll probably pull it off, but um, because I'm going to be painting a few of these and every period of time I'm just going in and out of a wet palette. But you can use any palette. So the, the first things first, we need to establish what colour uh, low light is, if you like. And we're going to paint a horse again. We're going to paint this, which is a Wars of the Roses plastic uh, light cavalry figure by Perry Miniatures. Lovely miniatures. We're going to paint a horse. So let's just get our colours in a row here, right? And I'll show you what I did. Let's start with a nice dark. Quite like that, but anyway, you need to be able to see it, don't you? That's a German black brown by Vallejo that is, that's a nice dark brown we'll start with. I'm going to add a bit of red into that to get a bit of a chestnutty colour. Mm -mm. 
which is a whole red of the Vallejo. I'm just going to embed that in. And then I'm going to give you my highlight. So the top end colour that we're going to go up to, the lightest colour. So we're going to go from a dark in the recesses up to the highlight. Right. Which is that is light. But we're going to put some red in there as well. So, to recap, many of us in historical wargaming, not all of us, but many of us, use a form of layering to paint our miniatures, whereby you would start off by putting one very dark layer uh, of very dark paint onto your miniature, covering it over the whole miniature perhaps. Then you put like a mid-tone in, over the whole miniature, and then you'd finish off with a slightly lighter colour. Obviously the problem with that is you're painting over and over, aren't you? You're painting over and over. And you're painting three layers with you know, distinct colour variations in them. The idea behind wet blending is that um, you mix those colours together on the miniature itself, uh, or you at least blend them in together a little bit. And therefore you could go from a dark colour up to a light colour very quickly and very effectively without having to do loads and loads and loads of layers. And if you do it right, in theory, it can turn out well. So I'll show you what I've done so far. So I've been starting off with a nice horse chestnutty, very dark, very dark brown, horse chestnutty base colour. So we'll mix that together. Right. So we've got our nice dark horse chestnut colour. That is our base. Yeah, that's what that's our what would traditionally be our base layer if we were painting in layers. And then I've got this very light brown, goldy brown. I'm going to put some red in that and just red that up a little bit. Bit of a chestnutty brown colour going. So that's our light. I'm not quite good enough yet to go all the way from that very dark to that very light. We're going to blend in between as well, so we'll blend between three colours reasonably quickly. So let's add that in. There we go. So we're getting our base, our mid, and our highlight. So these are our three colours that we're going to blend together very quickly on our horse. Excellent. Now, when I've been wet blended in the past, uh, I've been doing this, doing with one or two colours. Sorry, with two or three colours, I've been finding that the paint dries really fast. So I've been adding more water to it. Still dries really fast because that's what acrylic paint does. It's sort of designed to do that in a way. So I did a bit of googling and I bought some of this. Something called retarder medium. Yeah, uh, this is from Vallejo. There's very different types of retarder medium, but it's basically. Um, I, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what's in it. But it's designed to be something that you add to uh, acrylic paint to stop it from drying fast. So it, will, it means that you can extend dramatically the drying time of the paint, which allows you to blend easier. As soon as I started to properly use this and mix it in to all of the paint I was blending with, I suddenly started to get results. And previously I'd put tiny, tiny droplets in. It says less than 5%, no more than 5% of the paint equivalent should you mix in, uh, which is, yeah, which is true, I think I found. But you want a good dollop. Yeah, 5% is probably about that for this dollop of paint here. Yeah? So let's get a good dollop in there. Mix this retarder right in, right. We're in. So that's us set and ready. Let's get our miniature. And I'm gonna start. Oh, this is difficult to see. I'm gonna start with the horse's belly just cause it's a nice big area and I'll concentrate on there and I'll show you what I've been doing. Okay. 
fingers crossed, right? Because I've honestly managed to get this to work in the last few days. Sod's law, it won't work now. Uh, so we'll start with our darkest colour. I think I'm overboard on the amount that's on there. And already now I've got that retarded medium on there. I can feel that it's wetter already than it would be normally. So let's get that right in the recess of the horse's flank there. Yeah. Just get right in there. Done. Mm, covered. Mid mid tone. Can I have mid tone in? See how the paint's still wet? Still wet. And I'm mixing that mid tone in. And it's mixing on the miniature. Look, it's mixing. There's no clear line there between mid and dark. It is actually blending. Yeah. Okay. Highlight. Just a touch. Yeah. See how it's mixing? It's actually mixing. Okay. A little bit crude at the minute, but we're going to thin that out. Just dragging them back and forth a bit. Yeah. Just fur in those edges. I'm just kind of flicking at the edges of those three colours. Yeah, just literally mixing them together a little. Just to fold out the any lines. Yeah, look at that. That's it. That's it. We're done. Yeah. And I was being quite careful with that as well because I don't want to. Uh, mess this up on camera because I'm not redoing this again. I'm just going to go right in the middle there again, just to, just to accentuate the point a bit, yeah. Still dry, still not dry, still mixing, it's still mixing, yeah. Look how those colours have knitted together instead of layered. That's it. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then we'll come back and look at the result, yeah? Right, still drying, because it turns out that retarded medium really does work. But it's about that, yeah? And I know with the direct light, it's, it's not perfect, but I'll put some pictures up, yeah? So, it's only the one part of the horse, right? But, so that was really quick wet blending that I've not done that much practice on so far. And this, right, is layers. That horse, which I'm, you know, reasonably happy with, looks decent, was done with layering. Uh, and probably took, I mean, just in isolation, you know, that bit of the horse took twice as long as that did. Yeah. So I think that's quite exciting. And I'm quite happy with that. Uh, and I'm going to keep practicing and see how we go. But, you know, that is a, I suppose, is the point is that you can create something that, in theory, if I just get another one that's complete, you know, this is not perfect wet blending, by the way. You know, this is this is like my second go or something with this technique, this, this method. But that looks better, I think, anyway, than that. This isn't complete because I haven't based the bloody thing yet. But, but you know, that is layers. Took bloody ages. Probably took half an hour to paint that horse. No problem. That took about 10 minutes. 15 at a push. And it's better. So that is interesting. So that is just a very simple introduction to how you can knock stuff out 
that would otherwise be time consuming and difficult to get to a reasonable standard, you can use this technique with a bit of practice. And this guy's arms and legs are wet blended as well, um, which is another kettle's fish because a smaller area and different colour and all that sort of stuff. But as a basic concept, I think I'm on something. Have you had a go at this? Have you recently experimented? And have you got some similar results? Or did you turn away from it for a bit like I did and come back to it? Or are you still not convinced? Let me know down in the comments what you reckon and if you're going to give it a try. Go on, you know you want to.